Hello, I am Amy, and together with my friends Emma and Brian, we will be delivering website news from London Scotty Club in audio format. The advantages are that if you are out walking your dog you can listen to the latest stories from London Scotty Club. This new service is in addition to London Scotty Radio podcasts which you can listen to from this website or from podcast apps. Comment on how you find this new service. Thank you. Playing online and on smart devices. Now on London Scotty Radio, it's podcast time. I'm George Matlock. Welcome to Scotty MOT, the health and well-being show from London Scotty Club. This week, we are going to make a meal of it. More about that later. So please welcome back Stex Welfare Officer, Kath Marshbank. Did your 22 begin in a good way? Lots of Scotty rescues, missions? Yes, it certainly did, George. Um, We had a pair of dogs in which they stayed for Christmas with me because... You know, trying to be home dogs just before Christmas into a busy household. People have plans. You know, I thought it's not good. Mm. I thought it's best to keep the dogs here. Um, so I took them up to Scotland um, on Friday, up to the new home. Um, so they're now living up uh, in the north of Scotland. And we've got lovely beach walks to go on. How lovely, lovely. What part of Scotland? They've gone to Elgin. Right, right. I dropped the dogs off there Friday afternoon and then um, I stayed with a friend in Inverness just to make sure the dogs settled for the weekend, uh, just in case there were any big hang-ups with them uh, because they're not the easiest of pairs because they're quite nervous and, um, you know, if these these people couldn't cope with the dogs then they could have just come back home with me in the car but uh, thank goodness they've settled down. Right. Really lovely Scotty people. They've owned Scotties for 30 years, so they know what they're, what they're doing with the dogs, right. which is great. So these dogs went up from where you are, which I know is in England, over the border to Scotland. So I suppose this was a kind of a repatriation, wasn't it? That's it, yes, and the Scotties <laughs> back to Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> we want them down here as well, though. Oh, certainly, de- definitely. Yeah, we... Try to spread them about the country and then, uh, you know, the dogs aren't just always going to one area, staying in one area. Exactly, exactly right. Well, well done, and um, we hope, obviously, the, uh, the the dogs will settle in uh, well in their new home. So great to, uh, news to start the year off, um, Kath. Um, now, as I mentioned earlier, um, we're going to be making a meal of this episode uh, because we're going to talk about Scotty's diets. Now, what they eat, what they should not eat. Now, this is a topic that's as wide as the ocean and as deep as a Scotty's throat. We need to uh, to mention here that um, that Kath is not a, a qualified vet or a nutritionist, but an experienced keeper of Scotties, whose longest survived to be 18 years old, far more than the average age. So Kath is at least as qualified as the next to talk about Scotty diets. Kath, I, uh, if I can begin with uh, asking you about this, um, our guest Jackie told us a few weeks ago on Scotty MOT... <coughs> Uh, that Labradors are living half as long as they did 10 years ago. Uh, She highlighted that diets are not always great when uh, we're dealing with processed foods as the contents of tins can be cooked uh, at a very high temperature and then need vitamins and minerals added back in to the overly sterile food. Now, is that a cause of dietary problems and is it the reason why Scotties are not living as long? very hard one to prove the key thing with scotties is that we don't overfeed them and we don't overfeed them with too much fat because the scotties liver really struggles to digest fat so a lot of dog foods you know there's there's one which is on the market it's got a scotty on the packet you go into you know pets at home and you're looking, you know, which food's best for my Scotty. And there's one, there's a lovely picture of a Scotty right on the front of it. 
good for skin, it says. Uh, you know, if your skin, dog's got itchy skin, mm. buy this food. You look at the fat content on it, and it's 17% fat, which right. is just way too much for, for any Scotty. 17%. Um, so what, what would be a healthy percentage of fat, do you think? I, I say maximum 10%, 10.5% absolute maximum. You know, try to feed 10% and under. Right, so this is about double that. Um, OK, um, of course, we can't ne- mention names on air and uh, we won't be uh, doing that in this programme. But um, certainly, I think it's true that whatever the label is, read it. If there is a label, read it and determine whether or not um, uh, it is a high uh, f- uh, fat content. In this case, clearly, it's over 10%, so it is. Yeah, that definitely. would be your advice. Even some uh, raw food manufacturers, you know, a lot of people are going down the raw food route. I personally am not a lover of raw food, but Mm -hmm. if it's working for your dog, then stick with it. But again, all the raw foods, the um, change from manufacturer to manufacturer. Um, One dog came in a couple of months ago and he was on um, a certain make of raw food. And, um, you know, the people said, oh, he's, he's great on it. Um, when I actually got the food out of the packet, I could feel the fat and grease on it. Mm. Um, and it coated, it, you know, the metal dishes that I use, the stainless steel dishes. And, you know, it really took some roasting hot water to, to get rid of that fat sludge, from, you know, from that dish. Mm. So, again, you know, and you could see the globules of fat in it. So, you know, again, not ideal for Scotty. No, clearly not. Uh, for people who are wondering uh, where where Kath gets all these dogs from and what is the exact connection, so uh, if you're new to the show, you may not know um, about uh, Kath and what she does. She works for Stex. Now, this is the Scottish Terrier Emergency uh, Care uh, Scheme, which is a charity. It's been going more um, uh, more than uh, well, it's, had, it's quite soon going to be fifty years. I would say it's coming yeah, coming close yeah. to fifty years. <laughs> it's been around for a while. Um, yeah, we're not we're not quite at the fifty mark, but. Um, you know, we, we're getting that way. <laughs> Very close, yeah. You, yeah. you were opened in the what in the mid seventies, so you're really yeah, you're just there. You go. So only uh, yeah. four four years short of uh, of, um, of fifty years, um, and of course, um, as part of that, uh, as part of what you do as a charity is um, you you help to rehome Scottish terriers, or you help people who've got who fall on hard times with Scottish Terriers and need support. So um, very, very commendable. Um, and that's really what, what Kaz does. Um, so Kaz, I wanted to ask you as well next, um, you mentioned about raw foods just there and that you're not a fan. Um, is is it because, there's a, is it, the, again, the concern around fat or what is your main, main, the main problem thing, with it? The main thing with raw food is keeping the food frozen. Um, you know, a lot of the raw food manufacturers say, oh, it doesn't matter if it defrosts, you can re- freeze it again. Oh, dear. Which, you know, I think you're on a roller coaster ride, you know, to mm. the vets, upset mm. tummies. Yeah. Um, you know, if you, you've you got to be so stringent with the food, because it's raw meat, um, you, you know, there can be chicken mixed in there, there can be duck, um, there can be venison, beef, pork, lots of different meats within the um, within the raw food and you know so you need to maintain the keeping it frozen taking it out the freezer the night before so it defrosts measuring the quantity out to feed the dog and then giving the you know the the food again lifting the dishes up sterilizing them washing them um a lot of dogs they come down with um listeria infections tummy bugs which can be passed on to human because it is just, um, you know, a form of food poisoning. So it's, you know, you've got to be so stringent. So if you're travelling with your dogs, going to hotels, um, you know, staying away overnight, it can be very difficult. And once you've started your dog on a raw food diet, it's not good to keep swapping and changing and going, well, we're going away tomorrow night, so let's just give it some tinned food or, you know, let's just give it some dry biscuits Mm. again. You know, because the dog's stomach, you should always introduce food and introduce it over a week to 10 days. So just a small quantity of the new food that you're swapping onto mixed with your old food. And if you do it that way, you don't come down with any, you know, the dog doesn't get any tummy infections or any stomach ache. You know, because if you 
suddenly feed a dog that's been on a soft food diet, giving it dry food, that dry food swells in the dog's tummy, gives it terrible tummy ache, and, you know, you'll have, have a dog that's um, barking and shouting all night long because, it, you know, it's just in so much pain. I guess also, I mean, in some ways it's it's seen as the, the dream food in the sense that it's 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 supposed to be, uh, you know, uh, f- fresh food in the sense that it's, it's raw. Um, but that's true in the real, in, in nature. That's true if, if uh, you know, your Scotty has, has hunted down its prey. It's very different, I suspect, when you're taking it out of a freezer. And there are so many moving parts of this, as you said, sterilising everything and so on, maintaining that cleanliness. Uh, it, it, it's it's a huge undertaking. I, I guess unless you work from home and have a lot of time during the day, it's really not something that people um, in with their busy lives can possibly do. Am I right? That's it. So, you know, some people do work with it and, you know, the dogs are doing well on it. If your dog has got really bad allergies, then, you know, it might be a case that it's the only food for the dog and it's it's the best thing for them. But, you know, uh, a friend of mine who's a vet, she said the amount of dogs that do come in with, you know, terrible sickness and diarrhea and it's generally caused through the food that they're feeding, you know, and it's not keeping it frozen, um correctly you know keeping the dishes clean you know when the dogs eat the food you should wipe the beards down and a reminder that if you have a question for kath or jackie who alternate on this show released every two weeks on fridays at 9 a.m london time please use the contact form on our website and you can also attach photos or short videos if these will help us to understand the problem with your scotty Uh, you can go to our website, which is londonscotty.club, and select the contact form. Kath, um, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, you sharing your experiences with us today. Um, I'm sure we'll be coming back to the topic of diets in the future, won't we? I'm sure we will be, because, as I say, it's not not simple. It's, It's, you know, it's what works for your dog, which is important. Exactly right. Okay, so thank you very much, Kath. And please, um, uh, listeners, do get in touch if you like the show. Scotty MOT, back in two weeks. Thanks for listening to London Scotty Radio. This and all our podcasts are available online at londonscotty.club. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe to us from your favourite podcast player app. Also visit us on YouTube for fun videos. And if you have a Scottish Terrier in London or nearby, be sure to join us.